Yeah, AT&T is putting the word out this afternoon that service has been restored to all its affected customers. The company posted on its website that it sincerely apologizes to those affected and that it is taking steps to ensure that this does not happen again. Things like this show us that there is uh, definitely more work to be done. Drexel University professor Kapil Dandekar on the AT&T outage that took customers by surprise today, hampering phone calls and connections. AT&T today acknowledging wireless service interruptions for some customers and saying they were working as quickly as possible to restore service. Things got better, then worse, then better throughout the day. You can see here the more than 30,000 outage spikes around 4.30 a.m., doubling by 8 a.m., before coming down. By mid-morning, AT&T saying about 75% of its network had been restored. It's not yet clear what caused the outages. Professor Dandekar saying different things can prompt an outage from a cyber attack to other factors, both internal and external. It could just be human error, you know, something uh, in, you know, misconfiguration of some of the hardware that's being used. Um, you know, it could be caused by, um, you know, uh, atmospheric disruptions. The outage is getting attention from federal agencies. The National Security Communications Advisor today saying the FCC is in touch with AT&T to try to figure out what happened. Dandekar says he does have AT&T service but didn't see interruption in his service. Does this situation raise any red flags for you just in terms of um, how much our systems are prepared for something? Well, so, you know, there are two there are two sides of that coin, right? Because, you know, there, there's been so much innovation that's been enabled by having these new technologies. But as that innovation develops and, and these new uh, technologies uh, are deployed that we couldn't even imagine, you know, just several years ago, um, that does introduce new vulnerabilities. And for those who were affected by this outage, uh, they may have still been able to use uh, their phone to make emergency calls by using Wi-Fi calling. But Dandekar says if that does happen to you, make sure that the emergency address in your phone reflects where you actually are so that emergency responders can get help in locating you. I'm Lauren Make, NBC10 News.